Welcome back to another episode of Making a Platformer in Scratch. In this episode, we will be looking at creating a world with more than one level in which you can travel in any direction. We will also be creating static obstacles for the player to avoid, like spikes and lava. Let's get into it. Create two new variables called level X and level Y for all sprites. Under our when green flag clicked block, set both level X and level Y to zero. Around everything inside our forever loop, place a repeat until block. Leave the condition empty for now. Moving to our level sprite, open the costumes tab. Rename the only costume in this sprite to X0Y0. This indicates the coordinates of this piece of the level in the larger level. Levels placed to the right of this one will have a higher X value, and to the left a lower X value, and the same applies to the Y position. The order of the costumes in this sprite doesn't matter as long as they are named correctly. Still in the level sprite, create a new variable called costume for this sprite only. Grab a When I Receive Broadcast block and make a new broadcast called Begin Level. When I Receive Begin Level, set Costume to 0. Grab three Join blocks and place them like this. Join X, level X, Y, level Y. Add a space before the letter Y in the last join block. Then switch costume to the variable costume. After switching costume, check whether the costume name is equal to the costume variable. If it is, then we have switched costume correctly and the sprite will show. If else, hide. A costume with this name probably does not exist. Now moving back to the player sprite, add in a broadcast begin level and wait block before the repeat until loop begins. Our level will switch to the correct costume before anything else happens. It's time to actually let the player move from level to level. Create a new custom block labeled Switch Level with Run Without Screen Refresh checked. Grab an If Then block and an If Then Else block and check whether the X variable is greater than 240. If it is, set it to minus 240, and change the variable level x by 1. If else, check whether x is less than minus 240, and if it is, set x to 240 and change level x by minus 1. This portion of the script handles horizontal level changes. Duplicate everything and change all references to the X variable to the Y variable and change level X to level Y. Then change the numbers 240 and minus 240 to 180 and minus 180 accordingly. Add this to the custom block. Create a new variable called exit for all sprites. Inside our forever loop and above the begin level broadcast, set exit to zero. In the empty condition in the repeat until block, add an operator and check whether exit is greater than zero. 
Finishing up our switch level block, set exit to 1 each time we detect a level change. Finally, near the end of our loop, insert the switch level custom block underneath the change Y block. Before we test our level switching scripts, I'm going to design a few levels we can move through. I'll change the ground to be green as well, just so that it looks more appealing. As I mentioned earlier, this costume's name is X0Y0, so this is the level we will start in. I'm going to create a level to the right of this one, so I will duplicate the costume and rename it to X1Y0. Going right again, I will rename this level to X2Y0 and put a wall on the edge as I don't want the player moving any further. I'll make another level above this one, naming it X2Y1 to put it higher up. Now let's test. Hit the green flag and start moving around. We seem to be able to move through our levels perfectly. The player's movement is feeling very fast and slippery right now, and I would like to slow it down. When we move right and left, I'll change the variable xv by 2.5 and minus 2.5 instead of 4 and minus 4. You can adjust these values as you like in your own platformer. I like this movement much better. As promised in the video title, we will now get working on adding obstacles to our platformer, such as spikes and lava. Create a new custom block called Spawn Player, remembering to check the box Run Without Screen Refresh. Move everything underneath our green flag block and outside of our forever loop to be under the Spawn Player definition. Then insert a spawn player block below the green flag, still outside of the forever loop. Nothing has changed so far, we've just reorganized the blocks. Duplicate the level sprite and rename the copy to Obstacles. Set its X and Y positions back to zero and head over to the Costumes tab. I'm going to draw in some red spikes. I'm going to show you the easiest way to make a symmetrical triangle in Scratch. Make a square, holding shift to make it perfect, and using the reshape tool, delete one corner. Then hold shift and rotate the shape by 45 degrees and squish it. Now we have a perfect spike. I will copy and paste it around the costume now. Now delete the rest of the costume. Repeat this process for any other spikes you want in your level. The coding in this sprite stays exactly the same as in the level sprite. Click the green flag and our spikes should appear. They won't hurt us yet, so let's code that in. Grab an if-then block and check to see whether we are touching the sprite obstacles. If we are, set exit to 2. This number is greater than 0, so it will trigger our repeat until loop to end.
Below the repeat until loop, add another if then block and check to see if the variable exit is equal to two. If so, we have collided with Spike and will now proceed to die. Let's code a little animation to indicate that. Repeat 10, change ghost effect by 10, and change Y by 2. Then spawn player with our custom block. Let's test this. We hit a spike and we died. However, our ghost effect is still causing us to be invisible. At the top of our loop, insert a clear graphic effects block. It works wonderfully, but there's a problem. Did you notice it? Let's play this back in slow motion. For one frame, the cat is fully visible as it floats away. This is because our clear graphic effects block runs before the cat has moved to the correct position. To fix this, go to our spawn player block and after the x and y variables have been set, go to x position x variable and y position y variable. This has solved the problem. I'm going to add a smooth gradient in the backdrop from white to blue. This makes the entire game look much better. In this episode, we added new levels to our world and obstacles for the player to avoid. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you have any ideas for what I should cover in the next episode of the series, please leave a comment. If you would like to see more tutorials from me, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind.